hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. I finally got a proper background. I'm excited about that. I can't wear my black shirts anymore. Almost all of my clothes are like Esper colored basically, so they're white, blue, black. I'm gonna have to be careful now, but anyway. This is our MTG upgrades. We're doing another one of these here, and we're looking at mana rocks to proliferate. So what kind of mana rocks do you proliferate? Um, Proliferate is super strong, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Please hit like and subscribe. It makes such a big difference. Also, we have a Facebook group now. So if you want to go to MTG Nerd in Korea on Facebook, you can interact with me and give me any feedback or suggestions or anything like that. So yeah. And what is budget? $2 or less? As usual, I'm saying $2 or less, and um, we're using the TCG market value, not a sponsor. No. Okay, so uh, looking at proliferate. Proliferate is a very, very strong ability in general. Remember, the main limitation is just getting that first counter down. Once you have a counter on a player, on a permanent, on a creature, whatever it is, you're set, basically, right? It's all about your main consideration, or one of your main considerations should be um, how hard is it to get that first counter down? Does it do it automatically? Does it start with it? Or do I have to like jump through a bunch of hoops to be able to get that first one down? So yeah. Uh, Proliferate also has, um, a lot of people maybe don't appreciate um, things like Infect, right? I actually like Infect. I think, you know, it gets the game done. Like, I almost say like counter spells and things like that are more of a problem than something like Infect where it's just like, okay, you either gang up and you take out the Infect player or uh, you lose to Infect. And then you play another game. Hey, sounds great. Okay, the standard. So Astral Cornucopia and Everflowing Chalice, I'd look at as like the two go-tos for that. So Astral Cornucopia is X, 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 blah, blah, blah. When it enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. So meaning for every three that you put into it, it gets one charge counter. So yeah, it'll tap to choose a color, add one mana of that color uh, of your choice. Uh, add one, uh, sorry, add one mana of the color of... That color to your mana pool for each charge counter on Astral Cornucopia. So this will make colored mana. I actually thought it was colorless. That's why I got confused a second ago. And yeah, equal to the number of charge counters. So for every three you put into it, it gets another charge counter. And then if it, even if you cast it for three and it comes with one charge counter, if you start proliferating, you're basically making an extra colored mana every time you proliferate. Insane. Six cents only. Ha. Huh. Ever flowing chalice. So this is multi kicker too. So that means for every two you put in, rather than three, you're getting a charge counter on it. And you tap it, and for each add a add a color list for each charge counter. So this is quite as good mana wise, but it's a bit cheaper casting wise. Once again, every time you proliferate, you're basically permanently adding an extra. Colorless mana every turn. 23 cents. Crazy. Number five. Bandit's Hall. Okay, so uh, my eye is itchy now. Fun. For three mana, it's a mana rock that taps for any color, any color of mana. Okay, yeah. Whenever you commit a crime, put a loyalty counter on Bandit's Hall. This ability triggers only once at each turn. So targeting uh, opponents, anything they control and or cards in the graveyard is a crime. Very easy to do. You just need to target, right? It doesn't really matter with what. Just targeting them. Boom. Condition, you know, fulfilled. Remember, you can do this only once per turn, which may sound like a limitation, but it's once per every turn. So your opponent's turns count as well. Also, if you're proliferating, hey, no problem. Once you get one, you just have to target anything, and okay, 
or exile the graveyard or something and then hey good enough i guess i don't know if exile of the graveyard would work because i don't know if that counts as targeting but anyway uh two colorless and tap remove two loot counters from bandits hall draw a card that is super powerful having a mana rock that can double as like a card draw engine is um it's only one card per turn eh, that's actually pretty good it keeps it i think it's one of those things that flies under the radar like people always go like ah it's going to be one card am i using my removal on this probably not it's going to, always going to be like a higher priority so this is going to be like consistent card draw is what i look at it as um for two counters that's also a bit of a downside two mana and two counters also tapping means it's only once per turn but still all of those limitations i think work kind of to the advantage of it not getting taken out six cents number four empowered auto generator four mana for this artifact it enters the battlefield tapped and it does not have a charge counter when it comes in. So two downsides already, but put a charge, you tap it, put a charge counter on it, add X mana of any one color where X is the char amount of charge counters on empowered auto generator. So this is just gonna keep making more and more mana every single turn. Every time you proliferate, it makes an extra mana. Once you get that charge counter on, it really just takes off very, very quickly. 44 cents um yeah and it makes colored mana as well Ooh, if you have this and uh astral cornucopia you're probably set for mana for the game number three dragon's horde okay three mana so once again this is a three mana mana rock that can tap for any color of mana okay start and whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control put a gold counter on dragon's horde Remove a gold counter, tap, sorry, tap, remove a gold counter from Dragon's Horde, draw a card. So this is kind of better than the Bandits, Bandits Hall, but um, you gotta have dragons entering the battlefield. If they're tokens, that's fine. You don't have to cast them. It's just dragons entering the battlefield. So you need a deck that is gonna be able to like at least make some kind of dragons, casting or tokens or whatever it is, and yeah, then you just tap and you remove one counter and you're drawing a card every turn. So once again, earlier game it's mana, later game is card draw. And that's just a great combination for 164. Number two, Entad Prism. This might be the best one. I had a hard time choosing what to go first, actually. This is narrowly not number one. So for two mana, it has Sunburst. This comes into play with a charge counter on it for each color of mana used to pay its cost. Really good. And no tap, remove a charge counter from Pentad Prism, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So if you cast this, hopefully you can use two different colors to get two, and then you every time you proliferate, you can take a counter off and add a mana. No tapping, so you just do this every single time. Oh boy. Um, proliferate, make a mana. Proliferate, make a mana. Doesn't matter if it's someone else's turn, you can just take the counter off. 121. Number one. Okay, replicating ring three that, or an artifact that taps to add one color, or one mana of any color, I should say. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knight counter on Replicating Ring. So this automatically puts a, a counter on itself at the beginning of your upkeep, which is kind of bad because it means you got to wait a turn. Then if it has eight or more knight counters on it, remove all of them and create a colorless, or sorry, create eight colorless snow artifact uh, tokens named Replicating Ring with tap add one mana of any color. So this is, yeah, if you can proliferate, Within two turns, if you can proliferate six times, this is gonna make eight copies of itself. And once it does that, it takes all the counters off. Or if you have extra counters, it'll take eight off. I think, wait, yeah, remove all of them. Okay, so you do have to like kind of start over, but you can just do it again. You can make 
eight, uh, poten potentially every turn you can like remove, or sorry, every two turns you can remove all the counters, make eight of these rings, and then do it again, and just keep making like eight mana rocks over and over and over. 46 cents. A list. And it's Hall, 6 cents. Empowered Auto Generator, 44 cents. Dragon's Horde, 164. And Tad Prism, 121. Replicating Ring, 46 cents. Alright, take it easy.